You guys excited? Yeah, very All right. All right. You guys all welcome to Dream now? Thanks for having me. Thank you. 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 Should all be smiling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see something today. You don't get to see very often. You ready? Alpha First all right. Thank you all for being here. In 1996, Mayor Mike Duncan and I stood in this room the last time I was in this room without the big cabinet table in the middle and announced the return of the Detroit Lions. It's a great pleasure today to introduce the mayor of Detroit, Mike Duggan. This is a day we've been working on uh, for more than a year. Uh, and we are announcing today that Fiat Chrysler has designated the city of Detroit as its first choice for the first auto assembly plant built in the United States in more than a decade. Thank FCA CEO uh, Mike Manley uh, for his confidence in us. COO Mark Stewart, now about three months on the job and delivered success <laughs> already. Uh, but he's got a, a whole career uh, in the auto industry. Uh, and a special uh, thank you uh, to the late Sergio Marchione, who more than a year ago when I sat with him, I said, just give us a chance to pitch. And he said, you deserve that, and put us down the track uh, to let us be in the middle of what was a very vibrant uh, national competition uh, for this plant. Uh, but when uh, FCA decided to do this, it went against all conventional wisdom. In the last decade, there had been only three auto assembly plants built in the United States. 2011, Volkswagen in Chattanooga. 2011, Toyota in Blue Springs, Mississippi. And 2009, Kia in West Point, Georgia. So to be standing here today talking about being back in the city of Detroit uh, is truly remarkable. And we're trying to do something that's never been tried. And why uh, the agreement today is a little different than what you usually see. It's, a, it's an option for us to take 60 days because we have to assemble land in an urban area without eminent domain. Uh, it is not uh, possible anymore. Uh, to use the powers of condemnation to acquire land for plant expansion. Uh, and we are going to have to acquire 200 acres of land in the next 60 days through the voluntary cooperation of the surrounding property owners. Uh, and so I'm going to be busy uh, the next 60 days. Uh, and you're in an interesting situation when you are uh, talking to a company who said, I've got these huge tracks in different states that are farmland I'm ready to build on now. And I'm saying, you know what, I really think we can put this together. Uh, but I think it is a tribute to the Detroit auto workers, the outstanding vehicles being put out, the Grand Cherokee, one of uh, the world's great sellers that, uh, that FCA uh, wants to come here. And, and the building in Mexico, they're making American cars uh, in America. And uh, we're just so pleased to have you uh, as our partner. FCA is on a very tight schedule. They got to get this thing built in time for a new model year. And so 60 days isn't ideal for any of us, uh, but we have a, a unique partnership in this city. And I've said this many times, I think I've got in the city of Detroit, uh, the best city council in America, Council President Brenda Jones. And today we have here uh, uh, Council Member Janae Ayers and the council member who will host this, Andre Spivey. Uh, but uh, what we have is a rigorous process of review uh, that's done on a timely basis. And I think the fact that 
uh, we have behaved uh, professionally, uh, encouraged FCA to, to take the chance on giving us a 60 days. So what do we have to do? We got 60 days to deliver four things. We got to assemble 200 acres of land uh, nearby uh, the plant. Uh, we're going to need that. They're, they're going to build the plant on property FCA already owns at St. Jean and Mac. Uh, but uh, when you add 5,000 people, you've got huge needs for parking, you've got huge needs for trailer marshaling for the parts that are coming, uh, and you've got huge needs to store the vehicles that are going to be built. And so we had to come up with 200 acres of land in and around there uh, in order to do that. Uh, we've got to solve the environmental issues that may exist with that land. We have to get through the city's community benefits process, which has turned out to be one of the great assets, uh, the city of Detroit in development. We're the only city in America with a community benefits ordinance, and it is made for good partnerships between companies and neighbors, as we saw in the Ford process, uh, and, and I expect we'll do here. And we've got to get through all city council and agency approvals. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, but there's an awful lot uh, at stake. We're going to do this without putting anybody out of their homes. Uh, in the past, when plants have been done, you can't need three, 4,000 people. We're not going to displace anybody from their homes. We are, however, going to have to displace some cars because uh, there was no way to do this without closing St. Jean's. Uh, and that will be moving traffic uh, from St. Jean's to Connor, and that will be a sacrifice. Uh, but given what's at stake, um, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about a new $1.6 billion assembly plan with 4,000 jobs. That's remarkable. Then, what concerned me, and the reason I really went to Sergio a year ago, is the existing Jefferson <coughs> North assembly plant. Some of the uh, UAW workers had come to me and said, the Grand Cherokees are selling so fast, we're running the plant around the clock, we're getting concerned it's not being maintained, the next downturn will be closed. That's actually what caused me to go make the pitch to FCA in the first place that we could create more space for you if you want. I didn't dream we would be talking an entirely new plan, but they are agreeing to put $900 million into the existing Jefferson North plant and hire a thousand more people at that plant, which means we will have both of these plants operating if we can acquire this land uh, for generations to come. This is the way the city of Detroit fights unemployment and poverty. 5,000 jobs with an average wage of $58,000 a year. These are the kinds of jobs we need to bring back to the city, jobs that Detroiters can get training and do. We're already doing those jobs extremely well uh, at, uh, at JNAP, uh, and I think this is going to have just a huge effect uh, on there. We've entered into a memorandum of understanding for the next 60 days. We put the memorandum in your packet so you can uh, read it for yourself. It will be on our website, but it's pretty simple. Uh, it says, one, <coughs> Uh, that the new plant will be built at Mac and St. Jean's, and we have to deliver clear title to 200 acres of land in and around there. Now, that might sound overwhelming, but 170 acres are in the hands of four owners. The city of Detroit, uh, the Maroon family, no matter what happens, I run into the Maroon family on the property. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Detroit, Detroit Energy, uh, and uh, DTE, and the Great Lakes Water Authority. Uh, and so the only way to assemble this property uh, was to get big chunks. That's 170 of the 200. We're gonna need cooperation with smaller property owners to fill this out, where this deal's not gonna go forward. Of course, any one of the major property owners can stop us by themselves. Uh, I have nothing uh, but thanks for Jerry Anderson and DTE. Uh, that Connor Creek power plant has been closed, Dave Meters here somewhere, how many years? Five years. The, the power plant has been closed for five years. And I had to go to them and say, need you guys to knock down the plant, which they were working on anyway. Uh, and we need to make it available uh, for uh, vehicle storage as part of this deal. And DTE has sped up their internal process. We don't have an agreement, but they're working down the road. The Great Lakes Water Authority, we've had good conversations with. Um, and Matt Maroon, who a year ago I was saying, you have to sell the train station to Ford, was a little surprised when I called up and said, uh, you've got to sell the 80 acres of land that you have as part of this. Uh, and the difference is this time, the city's gonna acquire the land. And, uh, and everybody understands the city doesn't have a great deal of money. We're gonna do as much as we can through land swaps. But uh, some of this is gonna be uh, expensive, and we're gonna figure it out. 
right, with their cooperation. Uh, we have to complete the uh, Public Act 198 tax abatement process for the city of Detroit. That's about $12 million over the course of the project. That's a relatively minor uh, amount of money on the abatement side. Um, we are going to partner with FCA on the community benefits process. If you watched how it happened on Ford, it was a wonderful experience. We ended up with agreements with the neighbors on preserving affordable housing in the neighborhood and, uh, uh, and, and job training and opportunities for Detroiters. Here, I'm very hopeful that FCA takes a look at Southeastern High School. It's right next door and, and really focuses on training the next generation of Detroiters for advanced manufacturing and making Southeastern a full partner uh, with FCA and with the, the UAW before we're done. But the Community Benefits Committee will work that out over the next 60 days in the process. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we will, if we do this, have to close St. Jean which from Kirchival to Warren, which will mean diverting the traffic off at 94 uh, over to Connor. The one other thing that uh, the neighbors will see immediately is the berms along St. Jean. We're going to start moving the dirt uh, even next week. Uh, even if the FCA deal doesn't end up getting approved, uh, we want to redevelop St. Jean. So we're going to move that dirt one way or another, and I'll be meeting with the the neighbors in the next couple of days uh, to <coughs> explain that. Uh, but we're going to start moving quickly uh, because of our confidence in where we uh, stand. Uh, so people i got to thank. Uh, this has been Tom Lawan's deal from the beginning. Uh, Tom, let's give him a big hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've seen the first comparisons we were up against and the farmland opportunities they had. Uh, it looked like a real long shot. Uh, uh, Governor Whitmer, who came in and closed the deal, uh, with uh, Jeff Mason from MEDC, Governor Schneider had a huge deal. <laughs> and it was seamless from what Governor Schneider started, Governor Whitmer came in and made quick decisions uh, and got this done. Kevin Johnson, Kenetta Bridges, Becky Navin from DEGC, Basil Chariot and Dave Bernardo from the city, uh, the FCA team, who we have spent a great deal of time with in the last year, uh, but Shane Carr, uh, Christine Esterreicher, Ron Stallworth, Ben Monticelli, uh, and the entire group. Uh, this is going to be, we're going to be living with each other for the next 60 days to see if we can buy enough land that will configure this properly. Uh, and finally, uh, a special thank you to Tony Tersini, who happened to be the CEO of Ascension Health in St. Louis. When I realized how much land we had to buy and the amount of time we had, uh, the only time in my life I've seen it happen was when I chaired the stadium authority. Uh, and at the time, a young woman by the name of Mary Zuckerman went out and acquired all the land. She happened to have a full-time job running the St. John's Physician Network. Uh, but I called Tony and said, uh, can I have a, a loan of Mary for about 60 days? I think that was last summer. <laughs> uh, I called him last night and said the 60 days just started. Uh, but uh, Mary is volunteering uh, her time, and we would be nowhere without her. Mary, raise your hand and say thank you. Brenda Jones and the Detroit City Council, who have created an atmosphere in this city that says to business who want to be here, we're going to make sure you're sensitive to the community. We're going to make sure you, de you develop in a respectful way. We're also going to make sure you're treated uh, with respect in the process, and it's made it so much easier uh, to recruit. Uh, and so uh, with that, I want to uh, welcome up the man who's represented the company uh, that's made an enormous uh, leap of faith. Uh, he's uh, Move back home to the Detroit area. Uh, please welcome COO of FCA, Mark Stewart. Mark? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a super exciting day for us at the city of Detroit, Southeast Michigan, and for us at FCA. You know, as a company, we've had a manufacturing presence in the city of Detroit for almost 100 years, actually just over. It all started at Chalmer Motors on Jefferson, so not so far from, uh, from where we've got the JNAT plant that the mayor was mentioning. And, uh, and we're here to announce another significant milestone uh, in our company history. It's gonna strengthen our commitment to the community, to our employees, to FCA, and to the success of our Jeep brand as well. And it's really gonna base us as our continued manufacturing global hub for the Jeep brand. You know, for the last two years, we've already realigned our, our U.S. manufacturing footprint uh, at four plants in Illinois and Michigan and Ohio. And it was really to expand on our core products, the Ram and the Jeep brands, and we've been quite successful with that. 
and we want to make sure that we're able to continue to increase the capacity for the demand for our products, for white space products we want to bring to the marketplace. And we've, we've been very successful recently with, with the new Jeep Cherokee, the all new Jeep Wrangler that's come out, and our Ram 1500 that just won Motor Trend Truck of the Year, and to create some new space for the new Jeep Gladiator that's launching here in the spring. Today, our investment really represents the next step in our strategy for this uh, enhanced and increase to our capacity for Jeep. We're going to invest $1.6 billion to convert our Max Avenue engine complex into an all-new assembly for production of our next generation Jeep Grand Cherokee and an all-new three-row version of full-size SUV. An additional 3,850 jobs. We've got a couple of renderings here we want to show as we go through. And the reborn Mac facility, again, first new assembly plant in Detroit in almost three decades. And that was JNAP in 1991. So we're super pleased to have the last one and the next one. We really anticipate starting construction in the second quarter. Mayor? <laughs> and the community, we need everyone's support so that we can make that time, a tight timeline because our goal is to get the first three road new Jeeps off the line before the end of 2020. And it's, and it's gonna take a community, as we said, right? The, uh, we're also gonna invest, as Mayor mentioned, an additional 900 million in JNAP to modernize the facility, to expand the facility uh, as, we, as we refresh and bring on our new Grand Cherokee. And it's gonna have an increase of 1,100 new jobs into the JNAP facility as well. So super excited about, about the growth in MAC, the growth uh, and the revitalization for JNAP. And with the, the, we made other announcements today as well. Uh, we're having additional investments in Sterling Heights, in Warren, and our Dundee engine plants. So in total, we plan to invest four and a half billion here in Southeast Michigan uh, to expand our production for white space products, for new competitive benchmarks, uh, that we plan to roll out in terms of electrification to be able to have have our combustion engines, our PHEV engines, and be capable for battery electric when the market needs that. <coughs> and, a, and a net add of 6,500 jobs for the community. Thank you. So I'm more than a little bit pleased in my first three months, Mayor, of joining the company. It's a really <laughs> nice time. Uh, but it represents our largest investment uh, the company's made in operations since 2009, uh, and it's the single largest job creating investment in Michigan. We're super proud. Just, I, I can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of it. We want to thank all the folks in the room and outside of the room that have helped us. And, you know, Mayor Duggan, Governor Whitmer, thank you so much for, for helping us make this happen. And we wouldn't be here as well without the Detroit City Council, our Wayne County Executive, Mr. Evans. County Commissioner Ware, uh, our UAW Vice President, Cindy Estrada, who's gonna speak in a moment, and, and all of our UAW represented employees. <coughs> We're doing this together. And uh, Fred is gonna speak for <laughs> And then as well, our partnerships with the Detroit Economic uh, Growth Corporation and the Michigan Economic Development. Thank you guys for all the work of putting this together. And, and we also wanna to recognize today as well, our partnerships with Macomb, and the city of Sterling Heights, Warren, and Dundee with the investments we're making there that are also for additional jobs. But there's no doubt, as evidenced by everybody here supporting a rather large number of news crew in the back today, <laughs> that you know, this plan is really gonna provide thousands of great job opportunities for the folks here in our community, and for the community, and again, to really firmly plant our flag of the Jeep Global brand here in Southeast Michigan, here in the city of Detroit. So we really look forward to working with everybody and super excited for the next 100 years. Hope it won't be around. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce our, our UAW Vice President, Cindy Estrada. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty new to Christ there, so um, like Mark, we, uh, we are really excited to be a part of um, FCA. And, you know, I want to thank standing behind me as the leadership of the JNAP facility and the Mac Engine facility. I just want to thank them um, for all the hard work that they do and for making sure that they were here today. Um, 
because today's announcement, it's great news for our members of the UAW and our represented suppliers and for the city of Detroit. At a time when the Detroit area and our communities are seeing auto plants without work, companies continue to ship vehicles um, into the U.S. from Mexico, China, Korea, and other countries. It's exciting to see now that we can have good union jobs here secured at FCA. Um, and I think most importantly, I really want to thank this leadership and all of the members of the UAW and the management team at Chrysler. 10 to 15 years ago, this wasn't the story of Chrysler. These workers and management together fought so hard and worked together so much in making sure that they turned around those plants and they fought for the best quality products. And it's because of that, I think, that the mayor and, and everyone who it was so much a part of this, uh, this announcement and pulling this together that we can do it. So again, I just want to give a round of applause. Yeah. For yeah. So many people didn't think it would be done and they never gave up the hope that it could be done. You know, I want to remind everyone too, this is such an important announcement because this isn't a lot, we hear a lot of talk about good jobs. But these are union jobs, which mean that workers sat across the table, collectively bargained, had a seat at the table with management, and came out with really good wages and benefits, and a, you know a number of things. Not only benefits that can you can and wages that you can raise a family on, um, but there's other things. They have medical insurance, paid vacation, holidays, personal days, sick pay, sick pay, overtime, and shift premiums, legal services, tuition assistance, so they can continue to invest in their education. The peace of working and the peace of mind to work in a facility that has top-notch health and safety. The comfort of working where you know you'll be treated with dignity, even um, in, if, if, if you're not treated with dignity, you have a, a way to resolve problems. If you're, if you're not treated with respect or if there's discrimination, there's a system, a grievance procedure where, where people can come together and solve those problems together. Um, and we also have an incredible training center where people are trained every day off the shop floor so that they're not only being trained in the job that they're doing today, but we're looking how do we train workers for the future in this industry that we know is so rapidly changing. So um, I think it's a great opportunity for the workers that are going to be there. It's a great opportunity for the future workers. Um, but I don't want to miss the fact that these are union jobs. And union jobs mean good jobs when you have a chance to really negotiate and, and the workers have a seat at the table. And I also think it's important um, that this is such an opportunity for Detroit. In the same way that FCA and the UAW workers came together to reimagine their company, we have an opportunity with community benefits to make sure that the city, FCA, the UAW, and the community benefits team can reimagine Detroit or continue. And I, I don't want to say reimagine because there's so many people reimagining Detroit as we sit in this room, but it's an opportunity that if we really want to make real change and recreate the city of Detroit, it has to take everybody having a seat at the table. And I have learned that so well. And sometimes that's more difficult, that's more challenging, and there's a lot more fighting sometimes when that happens. But when you get it right, you have what's happened in FCA, which is 30,000 more members in the last decade. You have very proud <coughs> members who continue to work every day. You have a great management team that they're working with, and we help them be better all the time. And, <laughs> and they help us be better, too. So I just, it's, it's a real honor to be here. And, it, and it's a real honor to be here and to be able to introduce Governor um, Gretchen Whitmer. There is no woman, um, I've known her for a while now, and she's always fighting for jobs. She's fighting for good jobs. She's fighting for union jobs. And she really knows the value of bringing so many stakeholders that we only can do this if we all come to the table, that we don't have to be pitted against each other. Real, real success happens when you bring everyone to the table. And our governor, I am proud to say, is a woman who does that, will continue to do it. I've seen her do it. So it's a great honor. It's the first time I think I've introduced you. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. This is definitely an exciting day in Detroit. It is an exciting day for Michigan, too. And I think that's so important to make sure we understand the magnitude of what is happening here. A lot of people were a part of this, and Mike Manley's not here, but I wanted to acknowledge him and Mark Stewart. Um, Mayor Duggan, your leadership enabled me to come in and just in under 60 days make sure we continue the great work that was started before I got here. And we are going to do just that. Warren Evans. Uh, Cindy, thank you, and, and the council. And I also want to make sure to thank Jeff Mason and the MADC, who has worked incredibly hard to make sure that this is something that makes sense for us as a state, that leaves the groundwork for a <coughs> prosperous future, and that we get this done. 
And so I am incredibly grateful for his personal work and that of his team. You know, Detroit's always been known as the automotive capital of the world because everyone knows that Michigan's UAW workers build the best cars and trucks and SUVs. <laughs> time since we've seen an investment this big and transformative. Um, this is a moment in our state where we've got some momentum here that we've got to keep our foot on the gas. The mayor has eloquently talked about what this means for Detroit um, and the um, Mark talked a little bit about what this means beyond Detroit but I, I want to drop a few facts on you so you've got them. This is a $1.6 billion investment to convert Mack Avenue engine, engine complex to state of the art. $900 million around Jefferson North to retool and um, you know, um, increase productivity and, and make it a modern facility. $1.5 billion investment at Warren Truck in Macomb County. We wanna thank and recognize um, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle and his team who've been strong partners. $400 million uh, at Sterling Stamping and Warren Stamping. $119 million uh, at the engine um, uh, manufacturing in Dundee in Monroe. This has enormous implications for our state. Well beyond one municipality's um, you know, geography. This is a great investment that will spin off uh, benefits for so many of us in the state. 6,500 jobs that pay $58,000 a year on average. In 2018, FCA approached the state about building this new art of the state of the art plant in Detroit and furthering investments and facilities. And this is a generational investment in the state of Michigan. Oh, that only could have happened because of this amazing workforce that we have and the vision of leaders like those who've spoken before me. They've taken a great bet on the state of Michigan, and I think it's a pretty darn good bet. But we all know I'm pretty biased when it comes to that. <laughs> um, but it's so important because this investment is going to have ripple effects across our entire state and across the whole upper Midwest for that matter. Creating new opportunities for local businesses, providing a platform for further investment throughout our state. Um, you know, it's estimated that the multiplier for automotive assembly jobs is eight to one. So we're all gonna feel this. And if we're going to cement our status as the home of automated innovation for generations to come, we've got to keep our foot on the gas. Today's announcement takes us a big step forward, but we know in order to populate these jobs, we've got to have skills and we've got to work to close the skills gap. In order to um, you know, make sure that people are able to afford these vehicles, we gotta fix the damn roads. These will be rugged, <laughs> these will be rugged SUVs, but they shouldn't have to navigate. But they the can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to get it in there. <laughs> so one thing is for certain, this is an exciting moment in Michigan. We're gonna keep our foot on the gas as a state partner, mayor, and we are gonna make sure that we're able to deliver for FCA and for all of the hardworking men and women who actually do the frontline work every single day. I look forward to working with all of you the next 60 days to make sure we get it done. So let's get to work. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and the work that is lying ahead. We've got another partner in our county executive, Warren Evans, who is always at the table when we say there's something we gotta get done. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to the county exec for another. I just figured out why Jeeps were so popular. <laughs> Rugged roads. <laughs> <laughs> we fixed the roads and we refined the Jeeps. I guess we're in great shape. Do you know how easy it would have been for FCA to build on a vacant field somewhere? It would have been so much easier than negotiating to do this, but it wouldn't have been anywhere near as viable. Uh, I just want to thank FCA for the commitment it's made to this urban city, to the urban core, and what it's doing for Wayne County and the region. I mean, it's just, it's marvelous. We all know it's been 30 years since they last built one. Well, that's because they've been, the industry has been building them in fields everywhere else. You don't create the same synergy when you build a plant in the field. 
you get the synergy when you build it around hardworking people with a hundred year tradition of manufacturing uh, who've gone through tough times and need the work. Uh, so as we upgrade to more technical jobs, to more technical uh, environment, we still realize that manufacturing has been our heart for a long time. And we've got a lot of people who are going to do an awful lot better uh, because of FCA's commitment. So I just want to thank Mike Duggan. He pulls it off you know, with great regularity. Uh, the ability to make chicken pie out of chicken feathers. <laughs> and, 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 and it, it's wonderful, it's wonderful to see uh, the governor for her hard work. So thank you very much. <laughs> Director of Economic Development. We do a lot of work together, and I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, I also want to acknowledge that two members of City Council just joined us. They were um, finishing their, their session uh, two floors above us, but uh, uh, Council Member Roy McAllister and Council Member Roy. Thank you. And Council Member Scott Benson. <laughs> And now representing his colleagues and the entire city council and his district uh, magnificently well is member Andre Spivey. So we've had countless meetings the last few months, all four of us with FCA and the administration that we're now here and we now have sleeping bags in our offices the next 60 days so that we can get this thing done. I also want to acknowledge uh, our commissioners who boarded Chrysler Plant, Jewel Ware and Tim Colleen. They will also have rolled in this as well. In my anticipation for today, I looked at a video that happened uh, eight years ago at the Super Bowl, and it brought uh, tears to my eyes and tingled my spine. Uh, but I'm more excited today about the project coming to District 4 in the City of Detroit, the SCA project. Uh, this has been a long time coming. And we are well prepared in District Court to receive the work that's going to be done. I take their route every day to work. I have to reroute my, my way now down to <laughs> I think that's a small sacrifice for greater good for our, for our citizens. The automotive industry made the middle class in the United States, particularly here in Detroit. And the U W. And we are here to uh, we're here to thank you for what you all have done and what you're going to do uh, to provide not just jobs, but pride in District 4, pride in Detroit economic development, and we're looking to add more residents to District 4 as well. Mayor Mitchell Southeastern High School, Southeastern and Wayne County Community College District are well prepared to receive our residents to train them uh, to take on these jobs. And so we're very excited today about this very announcement. You could have gone to any green field throughout the United States of America, but you chose to come here, and so we're very well thankful. So uh, District 4, roll your sleeves up. We're going to get to work and make this a reality. Uh, we have the NAC, which will be appointed, the Neighborhood Advisory Council, uh, to go forth with the CBA. Uh, it'll be a heavy lift, but a lift nonetheless that'll be done, and we can take care of that. And finally, coming by our council table so we can approve it uh, within the next 60 days. And uh, this is a great day today to bring state, uh, county, city, and international officials together to make sure we pull this off very successfully. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, let's get this done. FCA, thank you so much. UAW, thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here today. And I will, had I announced you earlier, I would have said the hardest working woman in the automotive industry. Bring her back. I'll send you a truck. Come back. <laughs> it's really great to, to be able to introduce um, Fred Borden. He's a UAW member at JNAP. And I had talked earlier about the great quality um, that's built in our FCA facilities. And one of the reasons is because FCA also understands that you can't get that quality unless you turn to the workers on the floor who really have the answers on how to get it done. And FCA, I'm really proud to work with this company because they do that. But I'm even more proud of Fred and the work that him and his coworkers do on their world-class manufacturing system. And this is why everyone's going to be able or want to buy an FCA product because of the um, programs that he runs inside the facility on quality. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. WCM mentor at JNAP, and um, I've been there seven years, and since I've been there, it's a lot of change that's happened there, a lot of good change, and this is one of them. Um, the expansion that's going on, 
that's a great thing. You know, I went to Southeastern. They mentioned, you know, working on Southeastern High School, getting the knowledge gaps so they can come to the workforce and work for us. That's a great thing. Um, you know, right now, I live a little ways away from the uh, plant. I still live in the city, but I live a little ways away. So when they start to build the community and you bring the people in, and they're going to stay. That's what I hope they do. That they stay. Move out. Stay. Move closer to your job so you don't have a long commute to work. Um, that's pretty much about all I got to say, but I love, love the expansion. I love the way it's um, getting investing back into the community, investing in the schools. From 3030 Southeastern High School. <laughs> 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 and also born and raised by C.L. Jackson and Charles area. So I would love to see the expansion and the development of that area. All right. Thank All right. You. Now you know why the company loves Detroit workers. Fred, thank you. Um, before we get to QA, I want to thank a number of people here in the room that have been deeply instrumental in this. I want to start with Dave Meter. Uh, I think the mayor mentioned what a great job FCA did, but uh, it's been awesome. Uh, and I think uh, as we look around the room at the various people on the various teams here, uh, Kevin Johnson and Kenyatta Bridges, of course, get enormous credit for the awesome team at DEGC, but Nick Allen, uh, Nevin Shokar, Nick, Nick Marsh, Nicholas Marsh, Nick Allen, Nicholas Marsh, Brian Bosberg, Cleveland Daily, Damon Jordan, and Jennifer Canellos have all been an awesome part of making this happen. At um, MEDC, of course, Jeff Mason gets enormous credit. He's been a phenomenal partner, but so is Christine Rader. And I don't know if there's anybody else here from MEDC, <laughs> but Christine, thank you. Um, from the city, my own colleagues, Basil Charian gets e enormous credit, but so does Matt Walters, who, is, who did the first deal with me five and a half years ago and continues to lead our community benefits efforts and city council and everything else get things done. Arthur Jemison, Cassie Meidel, uh, Dave Masteron and Katie Hammer, both on the finances. We couldn't have done it without them. Dave Minardo, Gary Brown, Palencia Mobley, Dave Bell, Ron Brundage, Lawrence Garcia, of course, our lawyer, and Ray Solomon and Letty Azar uh, from our Department of Neighborhoods. In workforce, Jeff Donofrio is in the back of the room, uh, but Nicole Stallings and Nicole Sherrard Freeman from Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation will ensure that we have workers well-trained for these jobs, every bit as well-trained and as articulate as Fred. And then uh, from our legal team, Miller Canfield, I see Luke Polson in the back, his partner Jeff Aronoff and his partner Emily Palacios uh, are both deeply involved. And then from FCA, I just met today, Neil Go Lately and Glenn Shagney will be, of course, uh, part of our new partnership team. So. I want to thank all of you, oh, and Ryan Friedrichs, because a lot of our workforce happens only because of Ryan. So thank you all. I think I've got everybody I mentioned. With that, I'd like to open up for Q&A. Okay. Here. If I could mention one other person to thank, uh, this is how it takes a team, but the, the Wayne County Register of Deeds, Bernie Youngblood. <laughs> the amount of title work that we have had to do in the last month. He's put people uh, in the office Saturdays, Sundays, pulling title for us. Uh, and uh, the county executive, please share our thanks uh, with Register of Deeds, a young one. With that, anybody got any questions? Mayor Dunn, yes. Mayor? can you describe what the 200 acres looks like now? We're talking vacant land, abandoned houses, we're talking about Cotter Creek facility. It's, well, it's not abandoned houses, um, but uh, St. Jean, uh, it will be probably 50 acres or so. Uh, the DTE Great Lakes a Water Authority property maybe is 40 acres or so. Uh, assuming that we can make a deal with the Maroons, that's about 80 acres or so. It is right now a huge um, parking lot. Uh, the Maroons currently have a 10-year lease to lease that parking lot. The FCA, we've got we to work through all that. And then the others are going to be a lot of smaller parcels that we need uh, to fill in. And we don't know where the exact boundaries are going to be. Uh, if we get somebody who decides uh, that they're going to hold out from some astronomical amount of money because 5,000 jobs at stake, um, it's going to cause a real problem for us, and whether we can work around that site or not. Uh, but we are not talking any, uh, any homes uh, 
Me and Gerard, where are we married? No, no. Okay. Mayor, yeah. Mayor, will any preference be given to Detroiters to get these jobs, or how will they work? How many jobs do you anticipate Detroiters like to get? So what I can tell you is we just started a new plan at Flexingate, uh, where we've done extensive training in the city, 800 jobs and almost 65% are city of Detroit residents. I'm quite certain uh, that the chances of Detroit residents filling these jobs are greater than if this were in uh, Indiana. Uh, and uh, but, but we're gonna have, this is what the community benefits process is for. We're gonna have a whole plan to track and train Detroiters into these jobs. And Mark, you wanna talk about your recruiting effort? Sure. Yeah, we are we are really active to, to continue the development. As Cindy mentioned, we've got we've got a great training facility that we have together with the UAW today to train our folks and have folks progress in the, in the technical <laughs> skill trades. Yeah, if that's a career they want to pursue as well, but for the oncoming hires, absolutely. You know, we're we're building this in Detroit for the city of Detroit and for our community and for SCA. So absolutely. You know, we want to encourage everyone to, to apply. We also are uh, have, working on a partnership of how we're going to do development and training to have folks ready, as Mira mentioned. And uh, as, we, as we're ready to announce that, we'll, we'll bring that forward as well. But absolutely planning to have some educational development things within the city. So, I mean, everyone, I think the goal, everyone that I've talked to, whether it's been at FCA or within, everyone wants to see Detroiters. Detroiters should get these jobs. And so we'll all be making pushing and training to make that happen. But we also have a collective bargaining agreement, and so we'll be going to the table, and I will know one of the topics of the discussion, and I don't think it'll be a big discussion, is we have a lot of workers right now that are working temporary. And so, and a lot of them are from the city of Detroit, and we wanna make sure that they also have the opportunity to get full-time jobs, because um, they're our UAW members. So I think it'll, you know, I, I, I feel like there's a great commitment um, to the city of Detroit in making sure, as Fred so eloquently put, we want people to get these jobs in the city, live in the city in the way that it was when I grew up. You worked in the city, you, you lived in the city, you sent your kids to schools in the city, and I just think it's gonna be a journey that doesn't happen overnight, but I, I have a feeling that everyone in the room that I've met with is committed to making that happen. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Can you talk about the tools you have in the toolkit in case you run into problems in the next 60 days trying to get the properties converted, uh, especially when you consider the city doesn't have that much money to play with? Yeah, it's, the tools are, uh, are, are just going to be persuasion. Uh, and uh, I've spent a lot of time uh, with a number of the key folks. Uh, Mary spent time with a number of the others. I think most people realize this is a once in a generational chance uh, to change the economic fortune of thousands of Detroiters. And I hope uh, that uh, their better natures uh, prevail. But at the end of the day, if somebody absolutely refuses to sell, we have no legal means to make them, and that is why this is such an enormous uh, leap of faith on the part of FCA to trust us that we are going uh, to get this done. I'm gonna take a point of personal privilege to interrupt the Q&A. Uh, Madam President, don't hide in the back. <laughs> there would be nobody talking about major investment and major jobs in this city if we didn't have a tone uh, from city council that's been set by Council President Brenda Jones. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you all for being here today. As you know, the business of the city is still going on, and that's why I am late, but I am here. <laughs> and I want to just first of all say thank you to Chrysler for taking the time to even consider Detroit to build and bring new opportunities here for our constituents here in the city of Detroit. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the people in the city of Detroit. Detroit has been a city that has been known to be underemployed and unemployed. And as we see the opportunities come in to this city and Chrysler adding helps our constituents get an opportunity to be able to take care of their families. And that's what we want to see. So I say thank you to Chrysler. I think say thank you to all of those in the mayor and his negotiations as he continued to negotiate 
and all of those who have made it possible for us to see this day to even hold a press conference to say we are bringing more jobs, more opportunities into a city that many people moved from the south and moved their families here to get better opportunities for their families and themselves. So thank you. We look forward to seeing the deal come before council. We look forward to continuing to work to grow the city, to enhance the opportunities. And we know that there are many opportunities that exist in this city. This is just one of the many that we see coming before us today, and one of the big men when you say 5,000 jobs. 5,000 jobs, that is a good thing. So thank you to Chrysler. Thank you to all that was a part of making this day happen as we look forward to moving the city even farther as Chrysler enhances in the city of Detroit. So thank you, partner. Thank you, council members. Thank you, Mr. Examiner. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, County. So you know it's a big day if we have our for the governor away from the business of the state. So thank you to everybody. We look forward to partnering with everyone to make this a reality and to see 5,000 jobs. And I'm going to say 6,000. <laughs> We're starting out with 5,000. I'm going to say 6,000. We look forward to making this a reality. Thank you and thank you to <laughs>
that the community is involved in. There are a lot of opportunities where we can get the community involved. So if you're not familiar with the ordinance, it provides for the appointment of nine people from the neighborhood selected between the mayor, the council, and elected by the neighbors. Uh, and we expect them to have meetings over a period of several weeks, as they did on the Ford Project. I take input from everybody, and there will be a diverse range of opinions. And at the end of the day, what happens is the Neighborhood Advisory Committee, the nine neighbors, vote whether to recommend the particular package of incentives and the benefits that are offered to City Council. And I was pleased in the Ford situation and a number of others where you've had the Neighborhood Advisory Committee actually go to Council and testify in favor uh, of the package, and then ultimately Council uh, reviews it. So I would guess within two weeks we're going to see uh, the first uh, uh, Neighborhood Advisory Committee meeting. And we'll be able to take two more, and I know we've got other people who've got places to go. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, just to be clear, the city is buying this land and is going to give it to FCA? Right. Now, our contribution, the city's contribution to this is the land. Okay. Uh, that's our contribution. Is there any kind of tax breaks from the city? So there's, there'll be a, a property tax abatement of about $12 million, which in a $2.5 billion deal is, uh, is, is pretty small. Uh, the state is making a larger uh, our contribution on the tax break side. I'll let the governor talk about that. The city's contribution uh, is to acquire and deliver the land. The land is our contribution, as it was in the, the uh, Chrysler Jefferson deal uh, in uh, 1991. Uh, so the same thing will just be. In this case, we have a lot of other property we own, and we are negotiating with the best I can land swaps to reduce the amount of, uh, uh, of out-of-pocket costs, uh, but we're going we're gonna to work through that. But Mr. Mr. Mayor, do you see one of your biggest uh, obstacles here in obtaining land, and that's coming from the, the Maroons, given the city's tricky relationship with them in the past? You know, I, I keep hearing that. We made a deal with the Maroons that are building the beautiful Riverside Park. Uh, we made a deal with them. Uh, on the train station where Ford's moving 5,000 jobs in. Uh, but their business people are a very valuable piece of land, uh, and it's going to be a, a tough uh, conversation. Uh, but at least the last two times we got to a deal uh, that was good for the city, and uh, I think, I hope the Maroon, Maroon family uh, acts again as they have the last two times. And that's what I'm, I'm expecting to get a deal. Question for the governor. Uh, governor, can you tell us? Uh, what type of uh, tax incentives are you going to be offering FCA here? So I'm going to pull Jeff Mason up here. Jeff's been working and his, and his team tirelessly on this, and I think he's the best person to answer your tough questions, Jeff. <laughs> so uh, we've been in conversations, obviously, with the company and the city regarding uh, incentives that the state was bearing to bear. Uh, we're not ready to reveal exactly the extent of those, uh, but we expect that within the next few months we'll be bringing that project forward to Michigan Strategic Fund Board, which is a public body. Um, but we will use the tools available to us already uh, within our toolkit to bring this project home. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you all. How are you?